Hey, what's going on, guys? It's me, Train Man, and welcome to the weekly timetable for the week of October 12th, 2014. We had six videos this week, even in the absence of the Terminus podcast, so what happened? Well, I'll explain. Oh, wait, did we have six videos, or did we have seven? Hold on. Check, check. Let me check uh, my clips that I recorded for you lot. We had six. Okay. Oh. Because I don't... No, we had seven. Sorry. I don't have the overload clip. I'll have to go grab that before I post this up. Anyways. On Monday, we started with Simulation Protocol Overload, Episode 1. Uh, what is it called? The League of Extraordinary Minecrafters. Yes, that is us. We are the League of Extraordinary Minecrafters because we are extraordinary. Uh, the League part, not so much. Because one of our members is out with a broken arm. At least for the first episode. And uh, he is going to be out of action, at least, for a while. Uh, anyways, so Chris is not there. But it's myself, John, that you all remember, and Weibold, who you may not. And we are conquering Simulation Protocol Overload. It's a very interesting, complete the monument style map. Very difficult as well. Probably much worse so than uh, Inferno Mines, if, if the numbers are telling at all. Although I do believe that we could have been a little bit more careful in this area, in the area that follows, which has already been recorded. So that was kind of unfortunate that uh, we kind of had to throw ourselves at an area. But we uh, do get the first wool. Actually, Wybold gets the first wool. He gets credit for that. He found it, and he got it. So good on him. Great. I mean, I definitely couldn't went fall all that way for booties. Yeah. Great. This is going to be troublesome, though, getting back down. Wait, if you have feather falling now. Yeah, that block you're standing on, don't move it. Okay. Ah! Wow. That just happened. No comment. <laughs> I, I should have specified to not move yourself either, I guess. Yeah, that would have been nice. I thought I'd put the glowstone there. On Tuesday, we had Tram Man Plays Cursor Locomotion, episode 150. Further experimental expansions. Now, if you recall, last episode we made we uh, elaborated on an experiment the episode before we created said experiment, but this week we get into it even further with... Uh, why am I rocking? With uh, trains that connect it to the rest of the world, basically, that actually take the products that it's making and do something with them. Of course, it isn't quite in full swing yet, but we get there. Uh, the the yard at uh, the steel mill, or the one next to it, the yard of the paper mill, uh, needs to be worked on quite a bit before it gets up to its uh, best its best way, but. In any case, I'm very glad that we can get everything meshing together as well as it turns out. Um, we build these mixed trains that'll take stuff from... That'll take both chemicals and plastic pellets from the chemical plant back to the yard uh, ahead of the oil fields and transfer them into other trains which will take them to the rest of the route. Now, there isn't a lot of inter-route connection, everything's kind of insulated, which is a, a little bit of a surprise, for me at least, but it is working rather well. Alright, so that's that empty. We need to perform the surgery on this train. It's like giving him new kidneys, but you know, probably doesn't like the color of them, so he can just shut up about it. Alright, now you go. I think that's everyone. But I do still need to uh, edit this yard to be what it needs to be. On Wednesday, we had War Thunder Episode 28, The Bomb Squad. Because for a couple of battles there, we all spawned in bombers. So that we could, you know, we could go for that short, uh, what is it called? The Short Victorious War. Didn't work out in a lot of them, but we definitely did some damage, and I always get points in a bomber unless I get effed over right at the beginning, which happens. Uh, but it was quite fun, just 
everyone in bombers. I mean, really, it's less stressful for me because I don't have to worry about flying, but of course it's less interesting for you guys. Anyways, none of those battles did I actually survive through in a bomber, so you will see me fighting in a fighter for almost all of that. Also, the last, uh, the, it is a long episode because there are three battles in there and all the, they're all rather long. Uh, the last battle was with my sweet mate, among other people. And so we were down on tier one, so I was down flying my Russian planes, and, uh, yeah, we had a little fun there, too. Which means less bombing, more fighting. Twelve one hundred. I need to do it. I need to do it. I'm gonna they remove have four yaks remove on there. you from the game. Remove you from the game. Ah! Uh, 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 Damn it! That was <laughs> <laughs> like I just got removed. That was oh, yeah. <laughs> that was BS. I, don't, I tried to try a light pillbox and I can't even do that with rockets. They just don't even do it. Baloney. On Thursday, we had the Zombie Train episode 98, Mountain 98, 92, Mountain Baselines. I mean, uh, we work with some very long splines in order to establish where uh, giant landmarks are going to be. Now that I'm kind of, now that I'm far enough that I can begin cementing things, uh, we establish where we're going to put this big mountain peak and we start building all around it. Uh, and I encounter some interesting dilemmas with my train terrain tracks. On the other hand, we also have the opening for suggestions for next week's video, or this coming week's video, which uh, is a, whatchamacallit episode, it's a, it's a op session, which I actually just spent a couple hours setting up in TS-12, so that's what's going on. On another note, we do have some things that, because of that, I realize I need to work on, which are signaling and speed limits in a lot of the uh, route. And also, I haven't installed switch stands, or the uh, the route prototype switch stands in Galgora. Now, I call them route prototype just because I'm trying to keep everything uniform over the entire world. That's beside the point. I actually started to do things with some straightened spline points because some of these terrain tracks have gotten long enough that they've developed their own wiggle. And I'm sure you guys have seen that in more than a couple things if you've played around with this game for long enough. That if you have a bunch of... If you have a straight section after a curve, it always develops... And I, I don't mean straightened section. I just mean a straight section. It develops a... It always almost... No, almost always goes for an S. And that's something that I had to alleviate. We had an extra that week. War Thunder Extras Episode 1. Bomber vs. Bomber. Now, the format of these is going to change in the future, but what they are essentially is uh, possibly the day after a War Thunder episode comes out, or in the days... In, basically, they can appear at any time, but I'd expect them the day after a War Thunder episode comes out. Uh, but they're going to focus on a highlight from one battle, uh, usually. And they're not going to fit the format that this current one and this current one is just an extra battle that I threw out to you guys. It's going to be cut down to the moment that I thought was uh, necessary to to showcase. So this one would be cut down to just the, just the two moments where... Uh, Thor, Ven the Vengeful Thor, or whatever his name is, uh, Thor the Vengeful, is going bomber versus bomber, B-17, B-17 with me, and then when I get revenge, which is something to look out for, so go check that out, it's great. On, blah, blah, blah. also, just before I say anything else, uh, the extras, except for this one, will not have little slides or uh, little interludes showing bits that, you know, the one you're about to see. They're not going to have that. Maybe he's not using tracers. I got killed by an interpreter. No. No, he's going to the base. Zone destroyed. I got points. Good job. Just please. Throw the ruthless. I should have got points for that. I took out most of it. Oh, my oh yeah, God. I got points for that. Great balls of fire! Did anybody see that? But I just... No, Thor the Ruthless, why? 
Anyways, on Friday we had Troy Man's Fever episode seven, the water level route. Uh, are, am I sure I didn't name another episode this? Because seriously, I thought I. No, the the last one was Bridge Troubles. That's right. So we make a new route. Also, we have a title card. We make a new route, uh, based on t the two old ones that we just made after Bridge Troubles. And so that's strung together in order to get maximum profit, and this actually becomes by far our best line uh, in terms of money. And uh, next episode gets changed up even more with uh, with how everything is, is working out, because I get the money to demolish some buildings, but you guys will see that next week. Uh, the most important thing in this episode is, I don't know, there was never really a singly important moment. One of the coolest things was being able to double track a couple of bridges, uh, which normally is difficult to do, but you're gonna about to see that. I'm gonna take down that stretch of rail. Oh, it took down the bridge too? Son of a gun, I didn't want to do that. But I betcha I can't double track this bridge. Holy cow, that came as quite a surprise. At any rate, I'm really glad it, I could. Which track are you on? Okay, you're on that track. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the modifications that I wanted to make earlier. Thankfully, that didn't have too much of a slowdown in terms of speed limits. Why am I calling out to the to the interludes this week? I don't know why. It's it's something, something that I feel the need to do. Anyways, on Saturday we had Space Engineers episode eleven. The crew has arrived. Don't get discouraged by like the first half of this video. Something was very wrong with my sound, so I went through and fixed that. And then you can actually hear everyone and everything once you get into the video. Now. I don't know why that happened, I don't know why my sound was so low, uh, it's been fine in the past, and I must have just turned it down because I'm stupid. Anyways, it's a lot of working on the station that that will become our home base for, the, for more of this series. I'm just glad to have everyone together. Very. Uh, you know what I need though, I want to put up some interior lights around the place. What do you need for him? Just construction? Hey, I was. have to yep. go here in a few minutes. Oh, that's a shame. I don't know. Finally, some freaking god dang. <laughs> what do you want about? <laughs> I couldn't get the bullet from the blast to get into my inventory. <laughs> I'm gonna build another cargo container because you can never have enough cargo space. You really can't. I need some interior plates. I also need to clear out this area, including the thing that I just built this light on, so that is kind of counterproductive. Alright, uh... So that's that. We had three videos of the week this week. One of them is a, uh, almost a call-out to someone we've had for a video of the week in the past, and it's the guys who made the Beetlejuice roller coaster, if you remember. And I shouldn't mention this now because I normally make it a point to mention the video of the week last, but uh, they made a Doctor Who roller coaster. I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, so, another video that was in this category, in the running, even though it wasn't really in the running because I found the Doctor Who roller coaster first, uh, was the Neighbor visits Cheshire Police. Neighbor, as in a horse, wanders into. So, a horse walks into a police station, right? <laughs> Anyways, it's actually a pony. It's kind of funny. A pony, like, small horse. Uh, it's kind of funny because, <laughs> you see, I guess whoever was guarding the door or, or whatever, the night man, it's the middle of the night. The night man, elderly looking cop, is just trying to shoo the horse away and just completely ignores him and walks by him and walks into the building. And then one of the other cops has to forcefully get lead the horse back out. It's very funny. It's security camera footage. 
Anyways, so the other video that I have to talk about before we get to the winner is the paper airplane machine gun, the Papier Flieger, Papier Flieger, ah, words, um, Papier Flieger, oh, machine pistol, Papier Flieger machine pistol, that's, that's German, I'm gonna assume. Anyways, the guy made a, a, um, paper airplane machine gun, which is really cool, uh, Unfortunately, it doesn't give them a lot of oomph, so they don't fly very far. But the fact that you can pull the trigger on this thing and it'll, it'll spit out a bunch of airplanes one after the other is really cool. So, uh, yeah, that's that. And then video of the week, the Doctor Who roller coaster. It's made on Xbox, so it's even it's slightly even more impressive. And you know, Minecraft is cool and Doctor Who is cool, and they put a lot of time and effort. It isn't nearly as intense as the Beetlejuice one. I liked the Beetlejuice one a lot better just from a roller coaster standpoint, but the Doctor Who roller coaster is really cool because they put a lot of effort into uh, building the giant sculptures of things, and they always put a lot of effort into their cinematography. Just like the other roller coasters, it was done in one take with the person panning the camera around just where it needed to be. I'm not saying it was done in one in one take, but it was done all in one shot. Uh, yeah, it's very cool. They have you like go down the time vortex and go into the Dalek and uh, get chased down by a weeping angel and stuff like that. It's really cool. Uh, you can see that people put a lot of time and effort into these things, and uh, so go check it out. The link will be down below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't think I have anything else to talk about. I think, once again, uh, because I've been so attached to it, though, I have to give a shout-out to the Honor Harrington series of books by David Weber. I can't pull myself away from any one of those novels, and the military side of it is giving me a point of view onto a space navy that no other science fiction book has ever shown me. Now, I'm talking even Halo. They, they didn't get this deep. Now, Halo was very cut and dry in a lot of subjects, but I don't feel like there was nearly as much, or at the very least, it didn't give me as much of an impression as these books do on how a space navy actually operates because this is from a strategy and tactical standpoint it's of course it has a main character but it's not necessarily uh, it's not necessarily all from her point of view and, and by no means is it in fact it's very spread out and it's very interesting to see all these sides even though when it's not a chapter with honor Harrington and I kinda go oh, I wish I could skip this one but it provides you a lot of extra insight and David Weber is a god with characters uh, and with getting you attached to the situations. I heard a rumor somewhere that one of these is going to be turned into a movie and I really, really, really would pay to see that in theaters. Uh, and most movies I don't bother to see in theaters. Some movies I don't even get around to seeing even though I should. Uh, case in point is Guardians of the Galaxy. I haven't seen it even though I definitely should and I want to. Just haven't got the chance. But at any rate, that's my time for today, and I'll see you next week. I'll train. I'll train. I will train men out immediately. Goodbye.